everyone, welcome back to another Explorers Geography State video. It's been uh, a little while since the last one, but I've been pretty busy with college and I'm hoping to stick to a better upload schedule. This is, needless to say, a big one. So big, in fact, that I decided I wanted to cut this video in half. So for the first part, we're just going to talk about half of what I would normally cover in a video. So the flag, political geography, and physical geography of California. And then in the next video, I'm going to cover culture, history, and then sum it all up so that these videos don't get too terribly long. For the first video, I'm also going to be comparing Northern California, or NorCal, and Southern California, or SoCal. I'm going to spell out what counts where later in the video. As you'll see, the two regions are very different, yet somewhat similar, and they both come together nicely to form the California we know and love today. One more thing. By no means am I an expert on the whole NorCal-SoCal divide. I haven't even been to California. But I'm going to try to present it from as neutral a standpoint as I can. Well, that's enough for this intro. Let's get into it. California's flag is one of the few that officially has a name. It is called the bear flag, and it features a large California grizzly bear on a grass plot in the center. Below it are the words California Republic and a wide red stripe. In the top left corner, or in flag terms, the canton is a red star. All of this is set up on a white field. According to the state of California, the bear represents strength and is also the state animal. The star represents sovereignty, the red color represents courage, and the white represents purity. The state seal of California features the Roman goddess Minerva, known to you Greek mythology fans as Athena, a California grizzly bear feeding on grapevines, a sheaf of wheat, a miner, and ships, with the state's motto, Eureka, on top. Eureka means, I have found it. So, what does this mean? The grizzly bear is California's state mammal, and the grapevines represents the state's wine industry. The sheaf of wheat represents agriculture, the miner represents the mining industry of the state, and the California gold rush of 1849, which brought settlers to the state. The miner is working near the Sacramento River, a hot spot for the gold rush. The sailing ships represent the state's economic prowess and the Pacific coastline. In the back, the Sierra Nevada Mountains tower over the rest of the sea. 31 stars on the top of the seal represent California's status as the 31st state to enter the Union. But now we hit Minerva. Why is she here? Well, to those of you who know mythology well, you know that Minerva is the goddess of wisdom and war, and was born full-grown out of the head of Zeus. Why is this relevant? California was never actually a territory of the United States. What? But I'll wait until history to explain that. California's bear flag is arguably one of the most iconic state flags. The flag has been drafted a number of times, but the original was created by Peter Storm in 1846. The one that seems to be the inspiration for the current flag was created by William Todd, cousin of Mary Todd Lincoln. California also had a 10-year stint where they flew the Lone Star flag of California, which looked like this. Otherwise, California has existed under a number of foreign flags. Most famously, California was a Mexican possession, until they were ceded to the U.S. as a result of the Mexican-American War. Prior to Mexico, California was part of Spain. However, the Russian flag also flew from 1806 to 1841. Like I said, we're starting with NorCal, and it is in NorCal where California's capital lies. Sacramento, Spanish for Sacrament, lies in the Sacramento Valley along the Sacramento and America Rivers, right there. Of California's ten largest cities, five are located in the area known as NorCal. They are San Jose, San Francisco, Fresno, Sacramento, and Oakland at 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8, respectively. San Jose is the 10th largest city in the United States, and San Fran makes it just inside the top 20 at 16. Additionally, the Bay Area, or the metro area consisting of San Francisco, San Jose, Oakland, and the surrounding cities like Santa Clara, Palo Alto, and Berkeley is the 12th largest metro area in the country, which is located right here. The remaining five cities on California's top 10 are in SoCal. They are... Los Angeles, San Diego, Long Beach, Bakersfield, and Anaheim at 1, 2, 7, 9, and 10. Los Angeles is number 2 on the list of U.S. cities by population, and San Diego is right after it at number 8. The L.A. metro area is number 2 in the country by population, just after New York City. There are a total of 58 counties in California, 48 of which are located in the area generally referred to as NorCal. Of these, the most important are the ones that lie right here along San Francisco Bay, which are from San Francisco around the Bay, the city county of San Francisco, San Mateo, Santa Clara, home to San Jose, Alameda, home to Oakland, and Berkeley, Contra Costa, Solano, Napa, famous for its wines, Sonoma, and Marin, which lies across the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. The area known as Southern California consists of 10 counties, which are San Luis Obispo, Kern, Santa Barbara, Ventura, Los Angeles, home to the city of Los Angeles, Orange, home to Anaheim and Disneyland, 
San Diego, home to the city of San Diego, Imperial, Riverside, and San Bernardino, which is the largest county in the United States by area. This generally follows the line created by the 36th parallel. There aren't too many major international airports in Northern California, but you can fly into San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, and Sacramento via their international airports. The largest airport in California is Los Angeles International, known more often by its airport code LAX. San Diego also has an international airport. However, there is also an international airport in San Diego. Wait, Arsal, didn't you just say that? Well, yes, but this time I'm actually talking about Mexico's Tijuana International Airport. There's a cross-border terminal, which essentially means that you would enter the terminal for Tijuana International Airport in California and fly out of Mexico. This is one of the only instances of this in the world, and the largest and busiest one in North America. Northern California borders two of the three states that border the state of California, which are Oregon to the north and Nevada to the east, as well as the mighty Pacific Ocean to the west. Southern California also borders two of the three states that border California, those being Nevada here to the northeast and Arizona to the southeast. To the south, California borders Mexico, specifically the state of Baja California and the Baja California Peninsula. If you're wondering why it's called Baja or Lower California, that's because the state of California used to be Mexican and was called Alta or Upper California. But more on that in the history segment. Let's get touristy, shall we? There's a whole bunch to see and do here in Northern California, and we'll get started in the Bay and the Golden Gate Bridge. Right, you should have known I was going to start here. One really important thing to note is that the Golden Gate Bridge actually crosses the Golden Gate, which is a strait that connects the San Francisco Bay and the Pacific Ocean. That means that the Golden Gate Bridge actually runs between San Francisco and Marin County, not Oakland. The bridge connecting San Francisco and Oakland is the rather unimaginatively named San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, or just the Bay Bridge, which, fun fact, was broken during a World Series game between the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's in 1989. Also in the Bay is Alcatraz, which is a famous prison on a rock island, which was home to prisoners like Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly. But back on the land to see the beauties of San Francisco at the Golden Gate Park, Coit Tower, Transamerica Building, the Cable Cars, the Pink Ladies Houses, Pier 39, and the Fisherman's Wharf, which is San Francisco's major tourist area, and Lombard Street, which is the crookedest street in the world, notable for its eight steep hairpin turns on one block. Heading out of San Francisco and into the Silicon Valley, so many of the tech startups in the United States have their headquarters at the Silicon Valley, and their campuses and complexes, such as the Apple Campus and the Googleplex, are major tourist attractions in the valley. Turning out towards the northern and eastern end of the bay and into wine country, which is the U.S.'s top winemaking and grape growing destination. You can tour these wineries and try the wines if you are of age. The rest of the northern end is famous for its beautiful coastline, especially the Big Sur, located about an hour south of the bay, right there. Head inland to catch more of California's natural beauty in the form of Yosemite, Sequoia, and Redwood National Parks. More of a city person? No problem. Check out Sacramento, California's state capital, to see the old city and the state capital building. Eastward from there is Sutter's Mill in Coloma, which is the first place where gold was found along the Sacramento River, which led to the California Gold Rush. Heading further eastward, you'll arrive in the Sierra Nevada Mountains and to the Olympic host ski resort of Squaw Valley, near Lake Tahoe. Skiing is big in California during the winter, and Lake Tahoe is a prime spot for Northern Californians. Interestingly enough, per a friend of mine from California, people from Southern California likely go to ski resorts at Mammoth Mountain or Big Bear Mountain as opposed to Lake Tahoe. While you're in the mountains, be sure to check out Mount Shasta, a sacred, potentially active volcano in the Southern Cascades. There's also Mount Whitney, which is the tallest mountain in the continental United States in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Hey, but NorCal can get low too! The lowest point in the United States is at Badwater Basin in Death Valley. And there's a number of other cities outside the bay and the mountains to see, like Fresno, Stockton, and Modesto. SoCal may only consist of 10 counties, but boy is there a lot to see and do! Let's hit LA first, and obviously there's so much to do in Los Angeles that I'm just going to kind of run through them. The Hollywood sign stands over the city in the adjacent Hollywood Boulevard, with her Walk of Fame stars and the Chinese Theater. Nearby is Sunset Strip, an enduring musical hotbed. You can enjoy the fruits of the labor of Angelinos at the Dolby Theater, Walt Disney Concert Hall, LA Live, the Hollywood Bowl, and the Los Angeles Music Center. You can also head over to Culver City or Burbank to take a studio tour or catch a taping of your favorite TV show. You can catch some thrills at Universal Studios Theme Park in Hollywood. But maybe that's not your thing and you want to see some works of art, both natural and man-made. Check out the Getty Center, the LA County Museum of Art, the largest museum in the western United States, and the Griffith Observatory, a large space and city observatory on Mount Hollywood. Plus, there's plenty of famous neighborhoods, such as Beverly Hills and Chinatown, to check out. But maybe you like to live on the wild side. 
no problem. There's always the beaches at Venice, Malibu, Santa Monica, and Long Beach, as well as hiking at the San Gabriel Mountains and the Topanga Canyon, as well as Runyon Canyon over Sunset Boulevard. You can also hike up to the original Bat Cave from the Batman movies, which is located right behind the Hollywood sign at Bronson Caves. Hey, but make sure not to overlook the Channel Islands right over here, either. They're lo located right off the LA coast. Heading further south, you'll arrive in Orange County in Anaheim, on the Santa Ana River, most notable for its Disneyland Resort. Proceeding south along the coast, you'll hit San Diego, right along the Mexican border. While you're in America's finest city, you'll want to hit Balboa Park and her surrounding museums, the Star of India, which is the oldest iron-hauled merchant ship still float, the USS Air Midway aircraft carrier, and the Cabrillo National Monument, commemorating the landing place of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, the first European to see the Pacific coast of the United States. Also in San Diego is the San Diego Zoo, Museum of Us, which is an anthropology museum, Museum of Photographic Arts, and the San, F San Diego Air and Space, Art and Natural History Museums. Across San Diego Bay is Coronado, which is famous for its naval base, San Diego, which is the largest naval base in the United States and one of the principal ports of the Pacific Fleet. Head inland to check out the Imperial Valley and the Salton Sea, a salty lake which is part of the San Andreas Fault. It's also worth paying a visit to the resort town of Palm Springs in the Mojave Desert and Indio, home to Coachella and Stagecoach Music Festivals. Out in the desert, you can also check out Joshua Tree National Park. Some other cities to visit in SoCal include Bakersfield, San Bernardino, and Riverside. Headed back to the coast, make sure you get out to Santa Monica to ride the Pacific Coast Highway all the way to the northern end of the state, which is widely considered to be one of the most beautiful drives in the country, and one I want to do when I finally get to go to California. There's also the Hearst Castle just north of Santa Barbara, which was the home of famous newspaper mogul William Randolph Hearst, and is open for tours. One more thing, sports. California, and more specifically NorCal, has teams in all four major North American pro sports leagues, as well as the MLS and collegiate teams, most notably for college football. Really quick run through, for professional football, the San Francisco 49ers play in Santa Clara. In baseball, the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's face each other in the Bay Bridge series. In basketball, the Golden State Warriors play in San Francisco after having made the jump over from Oakland, and the Sacramento Kings make their home in the state capital. The NHL's foothold is the San Jose Sharks, and the MLS has the San Jose Earthquakes and the incoming Sacramento Republic FC. A number of colleges play in the Bay Area and throughout Northern California, but the most notable are the Stanford Cardinal, California Golden Bears, Fresno State Bulldogs, and the San Jose State Spartans. Like NorCal, SoCal has sports teams in all four major North American sports leagues, as well as the MLS and in college. In the NFL, you can find Los Angeles' Rams and Chargers, who recently moved up the coast from San Diego. Out of the MLB, LA has the Dodgers, and Anaheim has the LA Angels, as well as the Padres in San Diego. The NBA has the world champion Lakers and Clippers out of Los Angeles' Staples Center, and the NHL has both the LA Kings and the Anaheim Ducks. MLS features both the LA Galaxy and Los Angeles FC. A number of schools play collegiate athletics in SoCal, but probably the most notable are crosstown rivals Southern California, or USC, and UCLA, as well as the San Diego State Aztecs. And in the sporting world, Los Angeles holds a designation only two other cities in the world hold. They've hosted the Olympics not once, not twice, but three times! In 1932, 1984, and they will host again in 2028. The LA Memorial Coliseum has played a central role in all three, but that is not the most famous stadium in SoCal. The Rose Bowl, a cathedral of college football and home to the 104-year-old Rose Bowl game, is located in Pasadena and its adjacent parade. So, now that you've seen everything there is to see on the land, Let's see what lies just below the surface. California's highest and lowest points are only a few miles away from each other, both in NorCal. California's highest point is Mount Whitney, located in the Sierra Nevada Mountains and Sequoia National Park. Mount Whitney is not only the tallest mountain in all of California, it's the tallest mountain in the contiguous United States. So that's located right here. About 100 miles away in Death Valley National Park is the lowest point in the United States, Badwater Basin. Even though Death Valley in general is considered to be part of SoCal, the actual lowest point, lowest point is in the northern part of the state. Meanwhile, in NorCal you'll find Mount Shasta, a potentially active volcano, and Sacred Mountain to the Native Americans like the Klamath, who live in the area, and the second highest peak in the Cascade Mountains, which spread north into Oregon and Washington, right up there. Like I covered in the last part, California's highest and lowest points are located in the northern half of the state. However, part of Death Valley National Park, like right over here, does extend into Southern California. SoCal also has its fair share of mountains as well. The San Gabriel Mountains tower over the city of Los Angeles, which also separate the sprawling metro area from the vast Mojave Desert to its east. The two longest rivers entirely within California are both in the north. 
The longest river is the aptly named Sacramento River, which flows right through the capital in the Central Valley before it meets with the San Joaquin River, right about here, which is California's second longest river. Those two rivers eventually flow into San Francisco Bay. NorCal does not have California's largest lake by area, but it does have some of its most popular lakes, like Lake Tahoe, which is the largest in California by water volume, shared with Nevada. What's the difference? Area is simply the surface area, what you can see. Water volume takes into account depth. Why is Lake Tahoe this high on the list? Well, it's the second deepest lake in the United States after Oregon's Crater Lake. Clear Lake in Napa County is the largest by water volume entirely within California. The largest lake in NorCal by area is the Tulare Lake in the Central Valley, which was the largest until it was drained in the latter half of the 1800s. Rivers-wise, you really won't find too much in SoCal. Sure, you have the Santa Ana and the Los Angeles rivers, but they really aren't that long. From what I've heard, most locals are surprised to see water in them sometimes, because they're mostly dry. You'll have to look to California's border here with Arizona to find the longest river that touches the state, the mighty Colorado. By area, the largest lake in California is the Salton Sea, right here, in between Imperial and Riverside counties. Uh, in between the Imperial and Coachella Valleys as well. The sea was actually created by accident in an effort to irrigate the Imperial Valley, but the water flow was too much for some of the newly created channels that it just kind of flowed into the dry lake bed for two years and created the Salton Sea. Fun fact, the Salton Sea is saltier than the Pacific Ocean and is located along the San Andreas Fault. But more on that in just a minute. California is world-renowned for its Mediterranean climate, with hot, dry summers and cool, wet winters. This famous Mediterranean climate is what makes California valleys like the Napa and Central Valleys the premier wine-growing destinations in the U.S. And it should be no surprise, as major wine destinations like Chile, Spain, Portugal, and southern France also share this Mediterranean climate. NorCal, like much of the western United States, is dry and arid, and in the extreme southeast of the area right around here, you'll find desert, specifically the Mojave Desert. In the east along the Sierra Nevada mountains, you would find a dry subarctic climate, where summers are a little cooler. The Mediterranean climate reigns supreme in SoCal as well. The prevalence of the climate gives Los Angeles and San Diego areas their classic beach charm, with Los Angeles surrounded by some semi-arid regions. But the story changes when you head east and straight into the Mojave Desert, which occupies almost half of Southern California, where you'll find both hot and cold desert climates. All in all, California is a very diverse state geographically. But as divided between Northern and Southern California, NorCal is more representative of the whole state. Both the Central and Napa Valleys are located in NorCal, as well as San Francisco Bay, Death Valley, and Mount Whitney, and as I previously mentioned, the Sierra Nevadas and the Lake Tahoe make up the eastern end of the state near the Nevada border. NorCal also has a number of national forests, giving the western United States a green patch along the Pacific coast. Southern California has a number of mountain ranges, as I mentioned earlier, as well as the Mojave Desert and the Imperial Valley in the east, but I want to key in on one major feature of life in California here, earthquakes. It's no secret that Los Angeles is often the victim of earthquakes, but what causes them? Earthquakes are typically caused when pieces of the crust, called tectonic plates, rub together. The boundary between the Pacific and North American plates is called the San Andreas Fault, and it runs right through the middle here of Southern California. This fault causes frequent, but not often, major earthquakes in California. But when the earthquakes are bad, they are devastating. One of the most famous quakes caused by San Andreas is the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which, yes, technically happened in NorCal, but needs to be mentioned. The earthquake was so devastating that 80% of the city was destroyed, and over 300,000 people were killed. It remains one of the deadliest days in California's history. Before we get to the National Park portion, I wanted to bring attention to the wildfires that have been ravaging California. California is a dry and arid state covered in forests, which have been drying out over spring and summer after their wet season in the fall and the winter. So just before the rain returns, fires start in the forest and tend to burn at the mercy of prevailing winds, until they're either controlled or fizzle out on their own. However, as the world continues to warm up, the fires burn longer and fiercer, making them more dangerous overall. At the time of writing, over 4 million acres of forests, about 4% of the state's forest area, have been burned by 8,500 fires. Cities and towns have been destroyed, and thousands of Californians have been forced to evacuate. And with the ongoing pandemic, which has seen California's stay-at-home orders among the strictest in the United States, Many of these Californians have nowhere to go. These fires have also cast an eerie orange haze over much of the Golden State. Due to a mix of human-induced climate change and poor forest management, 2020 has been the worst fire season in California on record, and the Doe Fire is the largest wildfire ever recorded. Its complex, the August Complex, is the largest wildfire complex ever recorded in California. Look, there really is no way to transition out of this, so I'll conclude by asking you all to keep those affected in California, Oregon, and Nevada in your prayers 
And if you want to help, there are plenty of places to donate or send supplies, a couple of which we have linked down below. So on a far lighter note, let's talk about some of the places where you can go and see the immense beauty California has to offer. The National Parks. California has more national parks than any other state, with nine. Those nine make up part of the 28 National Park Service administered sites within the state of California. In the northern end of the state, you'll find majestic parks as Redwood and Lassen Volcanic, as well as Sequoia and Kings Canyon, Pinnacles, part of Death Valley, and the granddaddy of California parks, Yosemite. In addition to all the beautiful natural sites, historic sites such as Alcatraz and the San Francisco Presidio are protected by the National Park Service, not to mention the home of early National Park pioneer John Muir, who helped to convince Theodore Roosevelt to create the National Park Service after Muir took Roosevelt camping in what is now Yosemite National Park. Because of this, Muir is considered the father of the National Park Service, and his home is protected in Martinez, as just one of the many national parks in San Francisco and in the Bay Area. In SoCal, you'll only find a few national parks, but the ones that you do find are absolutely gorgeous. Take Channel Islands, just off the coast of Los Angeles, which are world famous for their deep blue waters and rugged hiking trails. Or in the desert, you can find Joshua Tree National Park, right over here, and some of Death Valley National Park. And just like in NorCal, SoCal has its fair share of historic sites protected by the NPS. Take Cabrillo National Monument, located in San Diego which commemorates the landing place of Juan Jorge Cabrillo, the first European to visit the American Pacific Coast, as well as the home of Cesar E. Chavez, one of the most influential Latinos in American history, who helped to organize farm workers' unions to fight for better wages. So, guys, this video is getting long enough as it is. Uh, I'm going to cut it off here, and we'll just pick up over in the next video. So, let me just head on over there, and, oh, remember to keep exploring your world!